All right, so we'll start with the HIV track of the conference. Uh, so I'll just briefly about how we plan to uh, get this session started. So um, first of all, we'll present the HIV case surveillance WHO package through a small presentation on what guidelines are globally available for countries to adopt. Because since you've gathered here from most of the countries, it's important to understand what the countries are actually doing with their national HIV programs using DHIS2. So we'll show what's available globally, but the focus would be on how countries have adapted their DHIS2 practice for HIV uh, and ART care. So followed by my presentations, we'll take a few questions if they're there, or else we'll move to the country presentations. We have uh, four countries presenting. Uh, Cambodia, Indonesia, Bangladesh, they are here, so they'll present. We'll have the national program of HIV from Nepal joining online, doing a presentation on their national uh, HIV tracker. All right. So through this small presentation, we'll try to introduce the HIV case surveillance tracker, the DHS2 metadata package that has been built in collaboration with the WHO uh, headquarters in Geneva and the team at University of Oslo. Through this uh, package development, uh, a lot of guidance has also been taken from the countries who've used uh, HIV trackers um, in countries. And uh, um, uh, what has been tried to do is to design a minimum data set that a country could use to track uh, HIV patients for case surveillance. Uh, of course, when we look at the uh, trackers that the countries use, they're much more extensive. But the idea here is to give a minimum baseline to work with, and the country can then adopt the package as per their needs and requirements. Next slide, please. Okay, so the workflow that has been used for designing the HIV case surveillance package, the, the WHO has uh, is for the people who are already identified with HIV. So we're taking care of the ART uh, care. So the person is already diagnosed with HIV and the person gets enrolled into the system. And since we're tracking that respective person, we're collecting some personal information, some unique IDs and some information on the ART site or the health center where the person will get enrolled for further treatment and follow-ups. Once the person gets enrolled, an initial case report is filed where we try to get the minimum details. When was the patient diagnosed with HIV? What was the age at diagnosis? Some information on the health center and the key population groups a person may belong to. Then once the initial stages, the enrollment and the non-repeatable stage for the one-time event is created, you move to the treatment visit, which is a repeatable event. That means you film it multiple times based on the number of times the patient visits the health center. So you mentioned the date of initiation of treatment, the eligibility for TPT and TB status, the enrollment uh, details on the ART, the viral load details and the prescription of ART and what was the taste of the last medication day in order to check the adherence of the patient on the ART treatment. Then we have the case follow-ups. So you may do follow-ups. Uh, the patient may come to the facility for their ARB refill or you could also do check uh, follow-ups on phone or may even do home visits. So depending upon the mechanisms of follow-up that the national program has in country, you could define that when was the follow-up, uh, when the follow-up took place, what was the mode of follow-up and what was the outcome of that respective follow-up visit. So it could be a phone call, could be a home visit and could be a visit at the facility. So this is the minimum information that has come out of the clinical guidelines that is a uh, must have if you're trying to track HIV cases in country for their respective treatments. 
and looking at the comorbidity for TB and HIV together. So since this is the minimum which is available, you can uh, identify the repeatable steps and add more information to these program stages, to these events, to have more extensive information on your patient management and patient care. Next slide, please. So the idea behind developing these packages was to give the countries a baseline to work with basically. So a country who wants to move from aggregate reporting of HIV to case-based reporting, they do not need to start from scratch. They have a reference available now. So that initial design is already a part of the package, which is open for customization and adaptation as per the national program needs. So the package itself can be adapted. So you have, uh, two broad ideas which were taken into account. One was surveillance and one was case management. So for surveillance, the idea was to have a documented uh, entry for initial diagnosis of HIV infection uh, as and when the person was identified and then track the care that was given to the patient over time for the treatment of the disease. So you see there in terms of the basic design, you have the clinical surveillance and you have the TPP sections defined. So you get a ready-made program, which is defined as per the WHO clinical guidelines for the minimum data set for HIV care that could be further extended to include all the additional information that a country intends to capture to manage their HIV cases in country. Next slide, please. So we'll go through some key features of the package. So of course, since we're tracking individuals, it's very important that we maintain uh, the uniqueness of the data. So therefore the package comes pre-configured with four kinds of identifiers and the country can choose which of the identifiers to use and they can even add their own identifier if there is a separate identifier available, which helps them basically to identify unique cases. So you have the national ID, so if you have the implementation of a national ID in your country, then you can use that national identifier. Health facility code. Now we see that health, at, in the health facilities, there are ARD registers where they also generate a patient code. So that could also be added here. You have program ID. So if a person is enrolled in multiple programs and is given uh, program specific IDs also, then that could also be used uh, in, in uh, identification of uh, the patient. Then we have the NHIS ID. So many countries have started supporting the HIV positive patients through their uh, health and benefit scheme for insurance. So you can even use NHIS ID as one of the identifiers of the respective patient. So these are the ones which have been already pre-configured based on the understanding that they have received from the countries who are using trackers for HIV. But these are customizable. You could add any more identifiers that you think are have more coverage in your country and will help you in terms of uniquely identifying patients. So basically through this package, you're creating a longitudinal tracking of the HIV positive case, where you are uh, noting down the patient's access to the antiretrovirals and the preventive treatment that is supposed to take for tuberculosis. So these are the three events, the initial stages I spoke about. You have the initial case report where basically you will uh, capture basic details when the patient was diagnosed, when the treatment was initiated and some basic information. And then you do a surveillance as and when you reach out to the patient or the patient comes into the facility. What's the reason for visit? When the treat, uh, has the treatment started or not? And when the treatment was started? And if the patient is eligible for TB preventive treatment, if yes, then we have the questions for the prevention treatment section. So you can define um, when the patient qualified for was eligible for TB pre preventive treatment, when it was initiated, what was the regimen given, and on what date it is supposed to get completed, and if there is a need to restart the treatment again. Next slide, please. Then you have these follow-up visits where, for any reason, if the person uh, wants to visit. Uh, the particular health center or the health center wants to reach out to that specific uh, beneficiary or the HIV positive patient, then they could create a follow-up visit and report the information for why the follow-up call was made, what was the follow-up method and what was the outcome. 
and then you can also uh, see here there are details which are supposed to be added for the treatment status at each follow up you update that the whether the patient is on currently on art or not on art uh, one was the last viral load uh, test done if it was less than 1000 ml copies and for how long the patient has been retained on art and what's the last date to be uh, art when the patient was on active so these details, some of these are automatically calculated through program rules and logics that have been added based on the past data entered and the latest event which is created. So these logics can also be modified depending upon the country requirements. Then coming to the analytics part of it, uh, there are six predefined dashboards uh, which are part of the package. So they already come uh, pre-designed, which have all the charts and the indicators on all the indicators configured to respective utilizations. So as soon as the country starts to report data, these dashboards get automatically populated. Again, these dashboards are configurable. So if you want to make any local changes, you all, uh, you're all free to do that. So we're looking at case reports and demographics, ART linkage and retention, viral load, TB prevention treatment, epidemic status, and health SD dashboard for cohort management. So each of these dashboards comes with a fixed set of indicators and based on the category, the indicators have been defined and already uh, arranged on uh, a dashboard. <clears throat> In terms of the key population markers, if you see, you while filing the initial case report, you can identify the key population for the patient. And sometimes you see that a patient may belong to more than one category. It may be... Uh, uh, MSM or maybe a person injecting themselves with drugs. So you could identify the key population markers where the person belongs to and do multiple selections. Uh, as And of course, these can be edited for country context. Many times we see that the country is more interested to have one single risk group for their analytics and they don't prefer having multiple uh, disaggregation of the risk groups. But depending upon the uh, country indicators plus the donor indicator reporting, you can modify the uh, the, the key population markers as well. So uh, here are some details where you can get more, much more detailed and broader inform detailed information for this respective package. So you have a link here which has the demonstration instance. You could access the link using you can access the instance using the below credentials. There are the metadata files are available on the DHSU.org website and the documentation on how this package has been designed, what considerations were taken while designing of this package are given on the uh, docs.dhs drop. So any additional information which is required for the HIVK surveillance package can be accessed from here. So that was the end of my presentation. Uh, before we move on to the country presentations, if there any specific uh, questions, concerns, or uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, John, and uh, I guess a wonderful presentation. Just for my own understanding, a couple of things you explained. Uh, one, in relation to that at the time of enrollment, and then also after the, the detailed uh, component comes in, I'm not sure what, what that label was. So you're collecting information on the health center at enrollment, as well as at the time of detailed, let's say, enrollment sort of thing. So is there a is there a separate segment in terms of the detail of type of health center that goes in across those two levels of enrollment and then initiation of treatment? Number one. Um, um, secondly, um, this, this last slide, and that's usually uh, at times, that's more of a public health side rather than the information side, but classifying, let's say, uh, a female sex worker or an MSM, while they're also injection drug users as well. So does the, does the system have a protocol of possibly uh, labeling a certain person across multiple populations as well? Is there a possibility in the system? Uh, because that of course then has implication for the containment of the epidemic side of it. So I'm more towards the public health side uh, in relation to that. Um, and thirdly, um, I guess, I guess when, when they're receiving treatment for HIV, 
plus active treatment for HIV, antiretroviral, and then preventive treatment for tuberculosis, right? So, so the system which which is recording this information would have their um, sort of parallel streams of working. So there will be treatment and prevention TB treatment centers plus HIV centennial sites. So in the system there, does it have a common health facility which has the EPT as well as the HIV treatment thing just to understand the architecture. So those three things. Yes, to answer your first question, so basically, yeah, so you have an enrolling health center with a patient uh, enrolled for the first time, but there are chances that the patients migrate quite often. So you may have, or the patient might end up at another health facility. That's why we spoke of the unique identification of the client, that even if a patient makes a follow-up visit to any other health center, then you're supposed to search for that patient and add records against it. So if the, the service delivery uh, uh, health facility is different from what the enrollment is. So you need to make a, a documentation of both so that you don't lose track of the records. And of course, you maintain continuity of care for that respective patient. So therefore, if you need more extensive information, then also you can capture those uh, health facilities accordingly. Um, coming back to your question on the decision on the key population markers. Right now, these are uh, just uh, normal data inputs, uh, which the ART counselor defines based on the assessment that he or she has carried out for that respective patient. But the system has the capability where you can set up assessment questions. So if a question, if you want to ask questions on uh, the frequency of sexual intercourse, use of injectables and all that, then you could just keep on checking that. So based on the algorithm that the country uses for defining key population group types, then the per system can assign the key population group based on the combination of parameters, because one parameter might have a higher um, uh, level in the algorithm that if it's out of three, then, but one carries more weightage than two, two carries more weightage than three. So based on the selections, you can then assign the KP type from the, that assessment. So for uh, the prep assessment that we've done in one of the countries, there they've used algorithm that they ask questions on drug use, sexual intercourse, use of contraceptives. And then they define that what could be the potential uh, KP type based on the algorithm. So in this package, it's all manual input. But if you want to implement that in a country, then you can modify and make this, uh, replace this section with assessment questionnaire and then let the system assign based on the responses. Uh, yeah, and the question on the... Uh, yeah. So basically the idea here is to track comorbidities. So based on the experience that the countries have, if they're tracking HIV patients, they also have a subset of information to be captured for TB patients as well that may be entered by the same HIV center or if they have mechanisms in the country where the same person can access both the TB and the HIV programs or you have a separate program altogether for tracking TB HIV comorbid cases. So that architecture and design happens based on the discussions on how the country actually functions in terms of parallel programs. So if there is a, can be a mechanism where the TB person can access the HIV records, they can make an update there directly, or the HIV person is doing the entire data entry for TB also. Or we have a separate program where you're tracking HIV TB comorbid patients, so then you can design your systems accordingly, where the same person could be enrolled into multiple programs. So I think these considerations are done when enough discussions are done with these the national programs, how they operate with each other and what kind of data sharing they agree upon. So based on that, you could think of the final design architecture for setting up the case events. Okay, do we have any more questions? So fine, so we can move on to our first country presentation from Cambodia. So like uh, the, the team member from Cambodia will be presenting to please come on stage. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Dala. I'm uh, from uh, National Center of 
at HIV Cambodia. I'm a lead IT tech manager. Um, today, I'm very uh, honest to present uh, the progress of we have done with the AS2 a project called uh, MPI or Master Pattern Index. Yeah, please. Uh, next slide. <laughs> Uh, this is I just introduce what we have uh, uh, been doing uh, for our project. We have a master person in that. Uh, at Antarctic Cambodia, we have currently we have um, five that the best separately. You see, uh, we have uh, for NPD, a national prevention database. Uh, this one is uh, exceptional, just a latest uh, have been. Uh, implementing the same DAS tools and so it is not a problem. It's not that uh, hard. We have another four separate database that is a legacy database and offline database. We have BISM, BCT, AOT, and lab. Uh, and all the database we aggregate all together to the MPI. Okay. Yeah. So we got DAS tool that cover all this project to identify the index of person. Yeah. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, this is uh, what we have uh, actually. I have uh, highlighted three main um, points. Um, first, the data and call, as I uh, have uh, mentioned earlier. Um, MPD with DAS2, so the same DAS2 with our uh, project MPI. So we can link together by just synchronize every night. And other for database is a legacy database. So we get a backup of the site and upload to the DAS2. Uh, this maybe uh, I would like to detail a little bit. For example, we have separate database and also have uh, 71 LT site in Cambodia and separately offline. They are not linking together. So what we are doing, we make up send the uh, raw file, bit encrypted, and upload it to DIS2 and aggregate together. Yeah. And then the uh, other step, we also uh, we also have uh, done the direct data entry. Um, it means that before we input the data offline in the old version legacy database, and now we are developing a direct data entry using the H2. Uh, we also have uh, finished this database, and now we are in piloting for the ART, just in progress, but in a good progress. And at the point, we have training our uh, local team. For building capacity, we have been done successfully two course, one online during the COVID-19, and another one we are uh, training uh, at PLES by UCFS team and also supported by AITS Vietnam. Next slide, next slide please. Yes, uh, while we are aggregate all the database, we have uh, um, form of uh, uh, Four and another one will be in lab. The four database also have each framework. All together, we, when we aggregate, we also have to aggregate all the indicator to the project. So this is what we have been uh, collected for the indicator. So we uh, have totally 49 indicator. And then I will show one indicator, for example, that in the next slide. Yes. For example, this is one indicator among the 49 indicators. Uh, the indicator of the percentage of the new people live with HIV who have initiated on ART on the same day. If one indicator be separated by the filter option, for example, we can filter it by uh, same day, one to seven day, or greater than seven day. Or we can filter it by province, multiple, uh, multiple province, or by size, AOT size, by sex, by uh, KP, or by a group. This is one indicator we can filter it by this option. Yeah, it's like this. Yes. 
uh, this is the use case that we uh, manage in our project. Uh, normally, uh, we have uh, been created uh, 12 user tests, but we highlight for a user that we uh, normally use, the, uh, mostly use. For example, we have guests, we have data analyze, data entry, and the main user is super user. And we have separate in, in this present, we have uh, the actual the user, uh, the line, so the line is full access and limit access. For example, you see, uh, the guest, I, I, I send for the guest, we can represent to the hair partner or someone who would like to see the report. So they can request to our uh, national center for the supervisor that, for example, I want to check the report or the dashboard in a province or a report related to the KP. So the supervisor will create a user for the guest, for example, for, from uh, um, global fund or for, from the uh, WHO, they want to get the report or any other site, so we can create a user. So the client can see the, the report uh, limited what they are requesting. Yeah. Yes, next slide, please. And this is uh, just a sample screenshot that we have uh, been done for the direct data entry using the AS2. Um, uh, just a, a sort for the BBE that a custom app for ART, almost the app for our uh, we are using is custom app. For example, uh, custom data entry app for ART. We have uh, to support probability workflow uh, to uh, replicate the paper form and also to register retest before ALT. Yes, this is the form that we have been done. That has short screen in the like this. Yes, also the custom data entry to support ALT workflow to enroll with T client uh, into ALT to support drag also drag chair and uh, follow up visit. Um, and then and another point is uh, transfer for, because the AI user can transfer from a clinic to another clinic uh, uh, across the AI clinic. Currently, we have only for public clinic, and in the future, we also thinking about the private sector transfer to a private sector. Next slide. Yes, uh, for dashboard, this is the dashboard that we have been. Uh, Develop it. We have a uh, dashboard for AOT and PCT, and also the report, also the custom report app uh, to generate a structured report. This is all the sample the slides. Yeah. Uh, and here, just uh, would like to summary the activity uh, in the next quarter and the main point that we are planning to doing. We have to continue building. Uh, capacity building for our DMU team that the time management officer unit uh, or the H2 framework because we have been uh, successfully uh, two main costs successfully, but we still need to, to make our skills solid and stronger. Yeah. Uh, number two is to, we are going to complete the testing of uh, implementing dashboard indicator because uh, we have not yet finished in this point. And we have to complete uh, uh, we have we are going to pilot the data entry on ALT and enroll at the one side in January. Oh, BT we have been piloting, but ALT we are going to pilot in January. And we also need to um, um, create a step down training to our data entry club, to our uh, provincial manager, and also uh, for the counselor to understand the DS2 framework. Uh, then uh, the number six is we are going to scale up the pilot from uh, for the data entry uh, from at least uh, 30%. Yeah. Uh, this is the main challenge. This that uh, I just a summary. Uh, the building capacity is always in the main point. We need to build our capacity that we, we can uh, stronger and we can continue working on the H2. And another one is the lab, like I uh, mentioned earlier, that the lab is come later. So we are going to aggregate the lab into our DSQ. 
and also the online data entry also in is our challenge with us uh, via uh, we uh, you know already um offline app uh, uh, currently we have three custom app aot vt and reported but uh, the custom app is not working with the uh, offline mode so it is almost also the big challenge is so in cambodia there are some province uh, some side very uh, long distance they cannot have the uh, smoothly internet access or sometimes the internet disconnect for one month for example so uh, we cannot work with ds2 yeah that is the big challenge yes thank you <laughs> If you have any question, please try that. That's all. So, uh, Thank you very much. So interesting uh, topic. Uh, so I want a question about uh, you saw the architecture before uh, so many for the data entry, like the architecture to the studies. The question is simple. Uh, that's the data is the real time where the input is uh, direct to the S2 or you have the time for uh, maybe one hour, two hour for the updating the data. That's the question. For the update data, updating data in the yeah. So, paper. so the for paper and then for the uh, the update visualization, um, analytic, the analytic, yeah. Uh, analytic. Yeah, that's real time or not? Because we. Help. I. Yes, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, for the data entry, uh, we are using currently direct data entry. Uh, we can say that uh, uh, not a real time. Uh, we just have one hour or one day, sometime or three days for data entry to input the data to the system. Uh, because currently we have two people working. One is a doctor or counselor that working with the patient. They uh, fill the information to the paper, and another data entry club take the paper to input to the system. That's why the data will be direct to the DS2, but not the same time when we interview with the patient and input the data directly when the uh, patient comes. It's not the time, but the data entry going to the, to the system. You mean uh, the real time is like this? Yeah. So it is answer to your question, right? Yeah, okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the Cambodia colleagues. So now we have uh, a Bangladesh colleague online who will be sharing the uh, HIV experience from Bangladesh for implementing practice. Good afternoon. Uh, I am I Ayodhya Jyoti from Bangladesh HIV 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 program. program. Um, are you listening? Listen, listen, listen to, me? to me? Hello. 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 Yeah. 
हेलो हेलो आर यू यू लिसन मी यस ओके 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 आई 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 एम 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 शेयर माय 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 स्किन Uh, hi, I am Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Uh, 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 hi, Aladdin. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Hello, yes. sorry, we're getting a bit of echo from you. Uh, I, 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 I listen, listen to you. I listen, I listen to you. Are you, Are listening, you listening to, to me? To me? Uh, we can hear you. We're just getting receiving some echo. I'm hearing, hearing you. you. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to hang on. It's not us that's doing it. Um, um, Aladdin, you're not playing it back to yourself, are you at all? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you haven't got any. Um, You haven't got your speakers on at the moment, have you? Uh, in my side, side I am okay. I am, 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 am listening. I'm hearing you. I'm. Uh, uh, okay, okay. In, in my, my side. side. Uh, bear with us just a minute. Hang on. Right. Sorry. 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 Uh, I think you are logging from uh, in two systems. Uh, log out from one system, and then it will be perfect. Hanan, 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 are you here? Are you here? Uh, yes, uh, online participant can hear you. But uh, uh, two voices are coming. Two. Uh, start with the Indonesia thing for the meanwhile, and while you fix issues, then we can proceed with Bangladesh. So, may I request Indonesia to please present? Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. I'm Sal Yusuf from Indonesia. I'm part of the research team in Hips Indonesia, and it's an honor for me to present you about our use case experience or a best practice using the DHIS2 for the district level HIV program integration, especially in the Pasar Bali, Indonesia. Slide, please. Right, so for the outline today, um, I will share about the background, current state, the implementation, the usage, and also the key results that we are going to share. One more, please. Okay, so uh, uh, Bali or Denpasar is one of the city in Indonesia. It's uh, maybe you guys always uh, uh, heard about 
uh, Bali. It's uh, in the one of the eastern part of Indonesia. And in the in the area, uh, there are a needs uh, to uh, validate and monitor the HIV program in the district of Denpasar. And for the national level, the data has been collected through an app called uh, uh, HIV AIDS Information System or SIHA in Indonesia. And they build their own uh, systems. But uh, this app um, made uh, stakeholders in the regional level or, or in the district level hard to or difficult to, to access the visualization, the dashboards and the analytics sort of things. Uh, since the access to those uh, information system or CIHA information systems only uh, access uh, can can only be accessed by the program HIV program officer. So for the stakeholders who are going to see or uh, uh, get the analytics or know more about the the data and monitoring the program, validating the program itself, it's it's really difficult for them to uh, to to access. And uh, uh, for, for that case, the stakeholders has uh, high dependency to the uh, program officer while on the program officer has so many programs on, ongoing. So they cannot provide uh, analytics uh, as, as, as easy as, as possible to, to the stakeholders. Whilst um, uh, and another thing, program officers uh, lack of capacity in, in providing the analytics to to the stakeholders. And also uh, for now, there is no special HIS in the uh, uh, primary healthcare uh, uh, facilities. So it's, it's really uh, challenging for them to collect all the data in one single system. So, and also the data also uh, being collected using the PCT or voluntary consulting testing and healthcare workers initiative on consulting testing. And it means that they, they do have the data in hand, but uh, no tools available to help them to provide uh, the stakeholders um, the analytics or to monitor and validate the program. Next, please. Yeah, so we, and if you can see the graphics right here in the office, they use the Excel spreadsheet to generate the uh, the graphics, so it's it's take a lot of time and to to, to provide the stakeholders the graph. Maybe you uh, the college here already experienced the same thing that um, a program officer in the healthcare facilities are not able to provide uh, easy to access uh, uh, visualization. So and also the data are fragmented between between the systems. Some of them are. Uh, paper based some of them are uh, already in the in the system but they cannot get the information uh, holistically to the stakeholders while on the other hand of course as i mentioned before stakeholders always need to access information quickly since they want to discuss with the governor for example they want to discuss with the um uh, with the mayor or or the ministry level and also from the data collected so far, the more uh, key, key uh, population uh, identified from the data uh, that was uh, collected. Next, please. So uh, we uh, started the, uh, the planning organization using this uh, method, the framework, the watch uh, planning organization, actuating and controlling. For the first, uh, the first phase, we plan the we assess the health information system in Denpasar and also uh, determining the requirements in, in, the, in the area. And also we discuss with the district health office and also healthcare facility or we call Puskesmas for the primary healthcare facility. Next, please. And for the organizing phase, we, we start to uh, do the procurement. We start the internal discussion for the technical teams. And then for the next phase, we uh, start the collection for the data forms for visualization needs. After we get the needs and requirements, we, uh, of course, we create the data elements, categories, and sort of things to start uh, use and import uh, and, and validate the data. Next, please. 
So uh, when the actuating uh, phase, uh, the first one we making the we made the data visualization based on the data source from the program. We create the num a number of uh, data visualization and dashboards based on the uh, requirements uh, provided by the program team. And the second one, uh, we conducted the internal discussion with the staff's program regarding the needs of the indicators. So we sort of map the indicators and the needs. And also the last one, we use the dashboards, we disseminate and we uh, train the uh, staff levels to use the, um, the dashboards. Yeah. Next, please. For the controlling phase, uh, in initially, yeah, of course, uh, the uh, we we are, we are not uh, get the we, we don't get the real time uh, data updating yet uh, since um, we still use the aggregate data and it's it's updated in on on a monthly basis every uh, uh, 15 in, on uh, in every month. But for the monitoring and uh, evaluation, we used to provide the stakeholders that every uh, uh, we used to provide the uh, stakeholders uh, about the progress of the ongoing uh, data collection uh, in a weekly basis. So for the implementation, this is the uh, uh, aggregate data that focusing on the key population we identified. So maybe uh, Surab last uh, in the previous presentation uh, mentioned about key population. In Indonesia, we have this eight, uh, around 80 population, including the transgender customers, um, sex workers, uh, TB, pregnant women, and transgender uh, to be connected to each other and uh, provide the visualization to the stakeholders. Yeah, so this one is the uh, visualization for the pregnant women, especially uh, yeah, as the key population because the stakeholders uh, need to meet the minimum uh, service standard of each, each regional in Indonesia that uh, they need to integrate every uh, program to HIV uh, AIDS. Uh, for example, pregnant uh, MNH, maternal uh, and neonatal program to uh, HIV AIDS. So uh, next one, please. And also the TB uh, tuberculosis program also need to see the uh, integration between the HIV uh, program that they are uh, uh, implementing in the area. What are the connection between uh, TB and HIV and the data itself? Next, please. Uh, it's the same thing with the uh, sex workers and men have sex with men's uh, population as well. And transgenders and IDU tested uh, for HIV. Next, please. So what what I want to mention is that in Indonesia, the key population, for example, uh, like let's say uh, transgenders, they also have like customers. Uh, so this one is uh, really uh, evolving. The, the data is is increasing um, year by year. That they need to uh, identify. Uh, about the increase of the HIV cases uh, uh, for the people with um, um, transgenders, uh, uh, sex customers, and also sex worker customers. Not only the sex workers, but also the transgenders customers. So here is the usage of the uh, visualization and the dashboard. Uh, we can see here is around 211 and 217 for each uh, during the um, I mean, for the latest one, the November 2022. Next, please. So we conducted also the capacity building for uh, the stakeholders and staff levels to, to see and how to use uh, and how to access the visualization. And later on, the next, please. Uh, one of the stakeholders uh, said that um, with uh, the DHIS2, uh, now anyone who handles a program in the in the within the Denpasar city uh, can also answer how many HIV cases uh, in the city and also its its connection to the key populations. So it's not only uh, it 
it's not only accessed by the help of HIV program officer, but also uh, accessed by any anyone who handles the program. Next, please. So for the next uh, strategy, I guess um, uh, the first one we uh, want to uh, integrate uh, the other uh, program like a nutrition uh, program and also utilization improvements, data quality improvements, and sharing also best practice how we use these systems and integrate the and integrate the HIV programs. And also, as we know that uh, we all we do have now the HIV package from WHO. So that will be the next step that we are going to uh, reach. And also, of course, since this is uh, still in the aggregate uh, level data, of course, the next step will be uh, in the individual data. But I know the challenge is, of course, uh, the systems itself, because uh, the, on the national level, they have their own systems. So uh, the, the DHI is too here, it just uh, help um, uh, for the uh, giving you an example, how the stakeholders in the regional level can use that to um, to support their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, monitoring and uh, validation of the program. Next, please. Yeah, for the key results. So this uh, dashboard actually um, about the integration of a HIV program already integrated with uh, what they call. Uh, direct or the Empathic Health Quick Response Information when all the health systems uh, together uh, in one uh, DHIS2 as a data warehouse. But uh, for the specific TV use case, we integrated this program with the pregnant women, TV, and uh, other key populations. And now, as the results, um, currently the uh, stakeholders at the provincial health uh, levels or uh, uh, city levels can access the visualization and make the decision or uh, create the recommendation as well as monitoring or validating the programs that they already implemented in, separate, in, in such area in the in the Pasar Bali. And now, uh, yeah, I think that's all for me. Oh, oh good. I, I already uh, explained a lot of things. Thank you, Mr. Thank Yeah, uh, thank you. Your presentation is very uh, useful. But I just would like to to know more about. Uh, uh, can you go back to the slide you you said that um, the February bill? Can you go back to the the slide you said? Ah, yeah, thank you. Uh, as we can see that uh, most of the users, they are using the visualization to, uh, to look at the data. And I just would like to know more uh, in, the, in the September, you see, in August, the number of users, they are very high. And then go, uh, going to the September, we see that the, the view of the data, uh, the user is down. So what happened? In, in in September then yeah thank you so much yeah so uh, actually for this uh, these two months is actually one of the uh, time frame that we implemented the this uh, uh, DHS to to the team so we we, we conducted the training of course, they can create a more uh, few of the uh, visualization and dashboard and the time and, and now uh, we, uh, that's why after the next one maybe is slightly down to, oh my God, uh, slightly down to uh, around 100 or less than 100. But of course, with, uh, with those information, we got that why, why is it decreased, right? So we, we conducted again the, um, like a capacity building, or we, we follow up the stakeholders and the uh, program officer that uh, here's the tools that you always uh, can use or you can you always can access those. So this is also the main point that uh, we need to ensure in our every program implementation in Indonesia that 
the importance of follow, following up of the program or the uh, implementation that we have. That's it. Thank you for your questions. Okay. Any more questions? All right, thank you, Team Indonesia. So we'll go ahead uh, with another, another online presentation from a colleague in Nepal, Dr. Kesha, uh, who will be presenting uh, about the HIV tracker used in Nepal, plus um, some HIV drug resistant research that they've done using the HIV to a national level. Kesha, go to you. Hello, are you listening to me? Yes, Hello? yeah. Okay, should I start? Yes, yes, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Keshav Deova, and I'm working as a senior strategic information specialist at uh, National Center for AIDS and STD Control, uh, which is uh, specifically my work is related to global fund uh, funded programs. And today I am presenting about uh, the use of DHRS to track our international SIV program and how we are using uh, the uh, DHRS to track her for research and survey purposes. Uh, is my screening, is screen sharing, Sora? Yes, Keisha, we can see your screen. Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll briefly yes, present, yes. this is my presentation outline. So I'll describe about how we build a DHRS to track our based information uh, system. We don't see a full screen. It's coming into the uh, preview mode. Can you please make that change? Okay, let me remove this one, I think. Now, can you see the screen? Yeah, perfect. perfect. Please go ahead. Okay, so, and I'll describe about the features of our developed system that is uh, DSI to tracker, mobile health and biometric system. And we'll briefly share about our implementation experience at the national level and our lesson learned and our ongoing efforts to strengthen information system of national SIV program. So why we build uh, this uh, DHRS to tracker information system is that uh, like once individual infected with the HIV, she or he has to enroll in treatment for whole life. So recording up uh, treatment details and analyzing reporting its outcome using paper-based Registers is not feasible. Let's say like someone is on treatment for like more than 10, 15 years. And if we, you know, try to monitor those, uh, that patient uh, progress or on treatment, it's almost impossible using paper-based registers. The second issue is like about, you know, uh, the if someone is on treatment for whole life, their movement is obvious from one district to another district or from one province to another province. So that... Uh, if there is no electronic system, then it's difficult to track, you know, their movement, and this might result in, you know, the uh, reporting of uh, same individuals from multiple sites that would res result in overestimation of ART coverage or uh, double reporting of same patient or client uh, to the system. So another important thing is like we invest a lot of resources, you know, to to improve the life of the uh, patient or client. Uh, so that uh, they can be, you know, improve their retention in the uh, treatment. So uh, by using paper-based registers or aggregated data, we don't know in real time what interventions or programs are working, what's not, uh, you know, or not possible to know if we want to intervene, if someone is not retaining on treatment, if someone is experiencing or so, uh, like uh, at the national level, or what are the reasons for the treatment failure? So it's impossible to, you know, to use those data by using paper-based registers or the availability of aggregated monthly reporting system. So also another important thing is like, is usually we get, you know, from national SMIs, the monthly reporting about like how many of the patient are on treatment, just like, you know, to analyze that detail, it takes a lot of time, you know, to prepare report manually and submit the aggregated monthly data to the system. So it's it's really difficult if you really want to intervene to reduce loss to follow up or missing status of the client. Uh, so all these you know challenges 
are related to paper based register or you know monthly aggregated data reporting system so to you know address these challenges uh, we we develop the concept and what we plan is to you know the develop the information system based on dhs to tracker and to improve the retention integrate the mobile health within the tracker and they also link the biometric system within tracker and generate monthly report within the dhs to to national smis on a monthly basis so this was the concept node to really implement this we collaborated with the india and we uh, developed the system and roll out at the national level so these are uh, the features of the uh, develop system and first we with this with the close support from is india we you know develop third party sms gateway and linked with the dhis for sending smss and we also you know uh, develop the script to identify the patient and type of messages to be sent to them and the frequency of smss to be to be sent to their mobile phone and another important thing was like we also you know integrated the biometric system uh, within the dhis2 tracker so that they can you know interact or interoperable within uh, these two system they can interact with each other and share the uh, recorded data so these are the steps and all the you know code are available in the github if you want to know more about it you can access and the link is provided here and this is the features of the develop system in the left side it's a you know the dhs has to tracker where the users can have to log in and they record the details of the client if someone is uh, coming to the health facility for the hiv testing or if someone diagnosed with hiv positive or receiving hiv treatment services the users use hivaids.gov.np and they log in all the required information and also the java based you know application develop uh, for the biometric and the same login is used in this app and uh, you know the collect the biometric information of the client so these both system are interacting with each other and can also share the information so the as i mentioned earlier the biometric system we use is to help us to identify existing patient and also help us to access the patient dashboard in dhs to tracker and it also helps to add you know a new patient into the system and link uh, that uh, information patient data details into dhs to tracker capture and uh, it's also help us to you know refer the patients uh, if someone is coming a patient coming from hiv testing sites to ard sites and uh, the these uh, biometric system also helps to use to you know record the client code and identify that patient's record uh, recorded in another site uh, similarly this is the you know uh, india has to track our features what we do is we can register and enroll the patient in hiv program and we have like different program stages here i have shown the program stages of hiv testing and counseling if someone is positive and enrolled in the treatment then what are to fill in in the ard follow up if the, someone is like pregnant then uh, the hiv positive mother is preg the pregnant then we can also add uh, their pregnancy details if someone is like the hiv mother delivered baby we also add about their details if someone is dead and we also record their uh, discontinuation of follow up details and this system also help us to refer clients between stc to art and art to art for follow up visits and it also help us to send you know the electronic records between the sites and between one districts to another so mobile health uh, can be used you know to schedule the text messages reminders to the mobile phone of client for specific purposes to improve the retention of hiv treatment and we send two types of messages one is appointment reminders uh, for pill pickup or viral load testing and second one is about general awareness messages about positive prevention importance of regular health checkup and all the developed you know, text messages are in nepali so after like developing this system and we implemented uh, first what we did is we identified the big uh, sites in the capital city and piloted these in three hiv treatment centers and we also developed uh, user manuals in nepali and english to guide health workers to use the system and we also you know invested the required necessary infrastructure servers biometric device uh, and to you know to securely uh, save the data and and we had like a central team at the nchc and the partners with technical backup from is india to support the sites 
And we also provided, you know, to roll out the develop system in all its heavy treatment sites by on-site coaching. And we also provided several trainings and the all resources allocated from the government and the other partners, technical partners, global fund, FHI, cell care foundations. They also allocated resources for training and rollout of the system. And immediately after the rollout of the system, and we we got you know feedback from the sites about uh, sorry, how to remove this one about like especially about uh, complaining about the double recording system because they also have to record data in the paper based registers and also in DHS to tracker and some of the remote hilly and uh, mountainous areas they also have like you know uh, poor internet supplies or slow internet speed and uh, when we uh, rolled out a uh, system in 2016-17 uh, there were already lots of thousands of uh, you know PLSIB already on the treatment so the health workers need to you know record all use backdated data online so it takes around you know 50 to 60 minutes to enter backdated data this was also issues from the health worker side and and incomplete informations were there in the paper based register so there was nothing to add in the e registers and there was in the beginning we also face the issues of nepali date uh, to the uh, the ad date in the system later this issue was addressed and the okay and uh, and regarding uh, mobile health, some of the PLS IB denied, you know, providing mobile numbers due to fear about disclosure of their HIV status, because the they face uh, the uh, stigma and discriminations from the society, and some of the PLS IB complained about the frequency of the text messages delivered through the system. We also updated uh, this one. Uh, we reduced the uh, frequency of delivery of messages. The interesting thing was we 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 thought like a few of the clients would uh, would uh, you know uh, not uh, not allow us to take their biometric system, but till date we haven't received any any like you know uh, complaint from the sites like uh, the certain or any individual client refused to provide uh, biometric fingerprint. They easily accepted it after briefing the purpose and the processes. So regarding, we also faced HR related issues, not enough time to enter data into the systems. So health workers working at the HIV treatment centers are also overburdened due to other responsibilities. And another big challenge was we trained one health workers and there was like high turnover of staff at the site. So we need to immediately implement another training uh, activities. And to address these uh, data recording issues, we also hired data recorders for the period of one or two months so that all the backdated data can be entered into the system. So after like few months of our rollout, we were so excited to, you know, get all the, you know, details, complete and accurate, timely reported data to the system so that we can generate all the, you know, monitor the progress of key indicators. But immediately, you know, after like few months of rollout, we faced like very slow progress in data recording in Tracker, and when we call site to query about slow progress in using system, most of the health workers even don't remember. Wavelink for tracker capture, that was like really frustrating. And in summary, like not all site excited and happy to use DHS2 tracker. Uh, not much excited as us working at the center, you know, the, especially those uh, officials working at the center or province were so excited, but not at the site. So what we, then we try to talk with them and then we, uh, identify the root cause, why they are not excited. They were not excited to enter data. The reason was like, because we never care to answer their main questions during rollout of system. That is why do they use this new information system and provide additional time considering their workload. So we never care to answer these questions during trainings. So during rollout, we focused on our advantages only at the federal level, such as use of individual level data to monitor treatment outcomes at national level, ARB regimen info would help us to provide information for procurement, generate real-time information about PLSIB in the country. But we never cared why should they use this information system. And then we started immediately organize several trainings and then we motivated sites. We started to focus on answering key questions like there are like different reasons why a site must use this information system, which will ultimately this, uh, reduce their workload. And we have used several strategies to convince health worker sites that information system was developed to reduce their workload 
and support their day-to-day -day operation of services. So we also prioritize data use plans as sites, and we also help them, you know, to uh, inform them like sites can generate monthly report with one click and upload it uh, to the national system so that they don't have to prepare a report in SMIS recommended format manually. We save their time. And site can monitor both aggregated indicators and individual level data patient for response. And we also developed a site level dashboard. And, and we, for example, to show the list of clients who need attention based on the parameters of retention and treatment, adapt, uh, adapting to dispensing practices, biological separations, and on-time pill pickup, they can easily identify those clients. So we have also implemented uh, several capacity development activities, and we also developed YouTube videos, how they can develop monthly report and upload it to the national HMIS. And we also develop, you know, these, uh, how can they monitor the different indicators for early warning indicators? If someone is client is already returned on the treatment or not? If someone is not, how do they identify the individual details? And these are the few pictures that of our capacity development activities we implemented in all provinces of Nepal. So what happened is like we developed that, uh, you know, the developed system in HIV testing and treatment sites, but there are lots of other activities happening in the country as the prevention, HIV care and support. So to, uh, and we just getting data of these three components, but big of activities related to prevention were missed out from this uh, tracker. And then, uh, we uh, developed a uh, plan to integrate a form for whole SIV care continuum. And we worked with all the partners, uh, uh, those who are working in this field, and developed the forms in DSS to tracker and rolled out in all districts and all uh, services managed by NGOs. Hello? Mm, yes, you're clear. Someone is speaking. No, Keshe, okay, so please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, will have to wrap up in two to three minutes, please. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So these are the advantages, and uh, we get you know real time uh, data at the different levels. Currently, we are like generating monthly reports from the tracker to the national system, and uh, from dashboard alerts, health workers, HIV treatment centers, or sites, you know they can easily identify whom you know, uh, client to focus on to improve their retentions, how to identify the patient with unsuppressed viral load, which requires their attention and supports overall optimization of uh, patient care. So this was our experience. And uh, I've like provided the link here of our user manual, our YouTube channel. So considering the time limitations, I'm not going to go into our like how we are using these DHRs to tracker, in you know, uh, planning and implementing HIV drug resistance. After like developing this DSIS2 tracker information system, we use this uh, tracker for uh, you know, uh, conducting HIV drug resistance at national level. This is just, uh, I'll summarize in one minute. Uh, this, uh, you know, explain about how, how this tracker help us to develop sampling frame and also in the randomly selecting sampling technique for the study populations. And maybe I can present this in like another platform, but I'll share this slide with, with uh, Saurabh and you can access uh, these slides. This is really, really important how we can use new DSS to tracker based information system to conduct any research uh, at the health facility for survey or sentinel surveillance. It greatly reduces the time and cost specific to development of sampling frames, sampling techniques and data collection. For example, the, our lesson learned or approach use can be replicated in other survey research plan in health facilities, such as WHO recommended point prevalence surveys on antibiotic use in hospital CTC. But I'll present this in details in other forums. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Keshe, for the insightful presentation. Any questions for the Nepal team? Hello, hi. Yeah, um, thank you, first of all, for the presentation. I think the um, presentation is very interesting, especially on the fingerprint uh, scanner. 
uh, and my question would be on that one because you're also interested in that. Um, the question is, were there any resistance from, I don't know, from the government or from other ministry or other partners or even uh, clients on the using or keeping the fingerprints? And uh, what was your response? Thank you for the question. So due to time limitations, what happened is I missed the acknowledgement. We, we developed uh, this system with the leadership of HMIS. Our HMIS director is there, Anil sir is there. He is, he is like supporting us throughout the process. And we also received the support from the another NCSC government authority. They also supported us and they own the whole process uh, till the like development of you know, the user manuals to establishment of the server at the government sites. So uh, that part, we didn't receive any resistance. Another part is like, we work closely with all the partners, like uh, those who are working in the field of HIV from the beginning, like from AIDS Healthcare Foundation, FHI 360, Save the Children, and also closely work with the key population. So we, we didn't receive much resistance, specifically related to you know, entering data, back, you know, backdated data into the system because of, uh, you know, lo lots of work responsibilities of health workers working at the site. But we solved that by hiring uh, the data recorders for a short period of time. That was the resistance. And another challenge is about, uh, you know, geography. We have like huge remote hilly and mountainous areas where we still, we don't have like, you know, good internet facilities there. That also, you know, to get all the complete data from those sites. So those were the big challenges. And and, and another one is like uh, the main challenges for, uh, we get for all health programs, you know, the high turnover rate. You have to frequently train them and, and the new health workers. Uh, not, not from like the macro level, the issues, uh, like not accepting the whole ownership of the process. We didn't we get that one because, we involve all the key stakeholders from the beginning. Okay, thanks, Kishan. I think in the presentation, we highlighted that for collecting the biometrics, uh, the people did not give much assistance. They were okay to share. And then this decision to implement biometrics was made in discussion with the ministry and the HMIS team. So that's why the, the process could took implementing it. Yeah. Uh, any more questions yeah. before we start concluding the session? Okay, so we have two questions from the online chat. One is for the Indonesia team. Uh, how many ERT centers are there in Indonesia? So if you could answer that, please. How many ERT centers are there in Indonesia? How many ERT centers are there in Indonesia? ART ART centers. I am not sure about that. ART the antiviral therapy. Oh, it's yeah. So okay. So ART center in Indonesia, it's uh, attached to the um, uh, healthcare, I mean, uh, hospitals. Yeah, hospitals. It's, it's like around uh, 3,000, 3, yeah, more than 3,000 hospitals. Okay, so I think the OCA, the second question was, how does the OCA work in Cambodia? So at present, I think the OCA app is not being used in Cambodia at present. So I think that's the answer. That's of our identities you have, of our, that's for the health and health. Yeah, the uh, OCA app, like usually it's for men designed in Lao, which is basically used for the desktop version. Uh, which uh, collects offline data capture for aggregate and uh, events. For the tracker, we haven't designed anything yet because there is also challenges about how do we link the track entry institute or the person. If your person is registered in one particular place, how does it get synchronized, the security issues and all the things. So that's why like, we haven't really touched that one yet. So we are focusing only on uh, making the direct data entry the online version first and see by the time uh, how best we can try to enable uh, internet access to the ART site 
because like ART site is located in uh, main centers, which is basically uh, either um, a provincial hospitals or, or that, that high level area. The ART hospitals are not located in the, the health centers. So I guess like for um, offline data entry should not be focused on, we should like actually make sure how can they get the internet, especially when there is a uh, patient-based data stored locally. My friend about the biometric, the DHIS can take biometric uh, type of data. Sorry? Biometric, you say the making finger. Yeah. So biometrics data, like I know like we can, but like let me find a relevant person who is actually hiding uh, his face. Plus biometrics data in DHS. <laughs> the question was, can we use, can we collect biometrics data in DHS? <laughs> Yeah, well, so we, we um, right now, uh, there's no kind of integrated native way to do it. Um, we are um, talking a lot to other partners, potential partners like, like Simprints and others. Um, and we might find a way to integrate. I know the Simprints team have done successful integration with uh, DHS2. Um, and we are exploring a collaboration with them, but there is no um, sort of existing native integration for this in DHS2 as we speak, you know, unfortunately. So any questions, uh, Saurabh, online? Is, is all the questions done? The coffee is there, so we can go for break. Yeah, so thank you. I hope the session was insightful. So the presentations are uploaded on the Google Drive shared folder. Uh, they will be available to you and the online participants also. Uh, we can proceed to the break. The tea is served at the end, so thank you.